If I were a lark in the morning, home in my heaven free, on the wings of the dawn I'd be soaring to errand across the sea. On the wings of the dawn I'd be soaring till errands fair shore I'd see. If I were a lark in the morning, home in my heaven free. During the great hunger, which some people erroneously call a famine, but a famine implies a natural disaster. And the truth is, Ireland grew enough food to feed its own. But most of that food was shipped to London by the British lords who had recently claimed their estates, thanks to Oliver Cromwell. During the great hunger, when a third of Ireland starved to death and a third of Ireland fled to America, to New Zealand, Australia, Nova Scotia. During that time, there was a young Irish couple, recently wed, and they lived in a small shanty near the coast. Now, his mother was blind and his father was feeble, and being a good son, of course, he welcomed them into his shanty. Though I tell you, many a night, the soup was more broth than potatoes or cabbages. Now, the young man was faced with a terrible choice. Listen close and tell me what you would decide. He could watch his family slowly starve around him. Or he could go hunting on the British Lord's estate, land that once belonged to his grandfather. But he knew if he was caught poaching, it'd be a date with the rope maker's daughter. What would you decide? Would you watch your family starve? Would you risk your life? He felt like he didn't have much choice. So early the next morning, he awoke before the sun. He went out to the little shed and he pulled out a small hand axe. He didn't have a blunderbuss or a musket. He sharpened the hand axe on a leather strap and he headed for the British Lord's estate. He climbed the stone wall and he headed into the ancient forest, what the Druids called the Nematong. And if you think about it, most European cathedrals were built by pagans to look like the ancient forest. The columns of the cathedrals have branches, and the stained glass windows are like the dappled light coming through the trees. As this young man was walking through the ancient grove of oak and rowan, he saw the tracks of a deer, and he knew they were fresh. And as he began to follow them, he saw indeed how fresh they were. And you're supposed to say, how fresh were they? There was something steaming in the middle of the trail. That's how fresh they were. And he followed the tracks for a ways until he saw the deer tracks were leading to a place where two stone walls came together. And quite literally, he knew he had the deer cornered. He raises the ax over his head and he quietly stalks forward. And there before him, he sees the most astonishing thing a snow white deer, its fur as white as a new fallen snow. And even more amazing, the deer, it spoke. It said, you've caught me fair and square. You can take my life if you wish, but you know you risk your own life in the bargain. If you spare my life, I'll grant you one wish, whatever you desire. Now the young man had never heard a talking deer before, have any of you? And so he didn't know what to say, which is the real miracle in this story. An Irishman with nothing to say. And so the deer continued. It said, I can see you're having trouble making up your mind. I'll give you the night to sleep on it. I'll be here in the morning. If you wish to take my life and feed your family, you know you risk your own life in the bargain. But if you take the wish, whatever you desire, one wish shall be granted. Now the young man was still at a loss of words. And so the white deer walked away. And the sun was going down. So he climbed a stone wall and he headed home. And as he was walking home, of course, the first man he met was his father. And he told his father the story that I just told you. And his father said, take the wish, my boy, and wish for gold. Gold would solve all of our problems. Now he had great respect for his father, but he wasn't sure that was the right answer. And so he and his father walked home. And when they came to the shanty, his blind mother was sitting on the front porch rocking. 
She didn't know it was getting dark. Her world was always dark. He told his mother the story, and you know what she said. Take the wish and wish for my sight. Certainly my sight is precious than all the gold in Ireland. Oh, he loved his mother. He respected his father, but he thought before he went making up his mind, he should talk to his wife. And so he went inside and he told his wife the story. And you know what she said. Take the wish and wish for a child. Certainly a newborn babe is the most precious thing in all the world. Oh, he and his wife had talked about babies, but was this a time when they couldn't feed themselves? He loved his mother, he respected his father, but what he had not told anyone, his secret desire was to go to America. He had received letters from his cousins who worked on the Illinois Central Railroad where a man could be paid a dollar a day. He went to bed that night and he had trouble making up his mind. Let me ask you, how many of you just eat the deer and get it over with? How many of you take the wish? Now, you can only vote once. How many of you wish for gold? Now, if your mother were blind, how many of you wish for your mother's sight? None of you love your mother. She's rolling in her grave right now. That's the first time ever no one raised their hand. Now, if you were newly wed, how many of you wish for a babe? Again, been there, done that, right? If you lived in Ireland during the time of the great hunger, how many of you would wish to come to America? Now, this is exactly what's wrong with this country. I think only 30% of you voted. <laughs> if you don't vote, you can't complain. A <laughs> democracy only works when we do. So again, how many of you would wish for gold? Let's get 100% of you voting. How many of you wish for your mother's sight? How many of you would wish for a newborn babe? How many wish to come to America? I think that's clearly the majority. Well, the young man couldn't make up his mind. He lay there tossing and turning until finally he decided to go to sleep. And he thought in the morning he'd know. When he woke up, it wasn't, his stomach wasn't just grumbling or growling. It was roaring with hunger. He had not eaten in three days, so his parents had enough. And as happens with many men, his belly made up his mind. He took the ax. He went back to the British Lord's estate. He climbed the stone wall. He headed to the corner where the two walls come together. And only in an Irish story would the deer actually be there waiting for him. He raised the ax over his head and he quietly crept forward. The deer saw him coming and said, have you made up your mind? Do you want to take the wish? Or do you wish to feed your family? He looked at the ax. He looked at the deer. I'll take the wish. Good, 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 said the deer. What do you wish for? The young man said, I wish my blind mother could see my wife rocking a newborn baby in a golden cradle as my whole family sails for America. <laughs> Thank you.